What's up, people? Sunday morning, uh, I don't know, what is it, around 9.30, and sit here on my way to work, and I was like, I, I gotta say something about this giant season after trying to recover from last night. And, man, that was, that was one of the more painful losses that I can remember in a long, long time. I've experienced some bad ones recently. The Islanders in the back-to-back -back conference finals because they were so close, once in a game six, once in a game seven. Obviously, you know, we've talked about on the podcast and over the years on radio, I've talked about all the, the Met miseries from Kenny Rogers in 1999 to, you know, the Subway Series in 2000 and, and the Piazza fly ball that Bertie Williams caught and so many other things. A lot of those, though, were close and you were proud because they had made it all the way to the, to the end and they weren't good enough, right, to get over the hump. The Islanders probably shouldn't have been in that spot either of the two times. And by the way, they look horrific right now and have their own problems, but I'll leave that at the door for now. And, and the Mets at the time really had come back in that series in 99, for example, the Grand Slam single with Ventura. Just to get to that point, they were even down 7 nothing for those who don't remember back in that game, and then had, I think it was a, a three-run home run from Piazza of Smoltz to tie it, come all the way back before they blew it, but they had showed fight in all of that. This giant situation reminded me more of after they had beaten the crap out of the Vikings, ironically, going back to the Dante Culpepper days, and then afterwards, Ron Dixon with the run back was the only touchdown I think they scored in that Ravens game, which I think was 34-7, to which was similar to 38-7 to and what happened yesterday to them. Um, I think a lot of people are going to now, and I get it, because all the love for Daniel Jones and, and I was part of it and everything that he had done. And then when he plays so poorly yesterday, well, it's all crap. And there's going to be a lot of apologists and Monday morning quarterbacks uh, tomorrow on television everywhere talking about how he's not that good. I do think it was a big season for him, and I do think he's the right guy. I think you saw in a lot of those coverages, and give the Eagles credit, forget about just the pass rush, but even when Jones wasn't under pressure, there was nobody open. I do think Hodgins and Richie James are part of the solution moving forward, but Hodgins is the two, James in the slot. They need a number one receiver. No offense to Kenny Galladay, obviously, very badly. We'll see if they can go get one. They need to franchise tag one, sign the other, figure out how to keep Saquon and Daniel Jones. I think they need to do a little bit better in the linebacking core. I think on defense, that's a key in that, that second you know, unit when you get past those front four who on the inside do such a great job. And we know Thibodeau now and what he could do with the pass rush. I think, for example, if they could have somebody who could run that defense at middle linebacker and, you know, think about how they had to bring in really, you know, Gerard Davis off the scrap heap to go into that spot, Jalen Smith off the scrap heap to go in those kind of spots. I think if they had somebody else in that area would help them. But you got to be proud. I mean, Brian Dable is the right guy. I mentioned the Islanders. I saw this with Barry Trotz, how he could change and, and transform everything. And obviously, he'd already won a championship with the Caps. And Dable, you know, has not done that, at least as a head coach. He's been a part of championship caliber teams as a coach. Think back to his time, uh, you know, with the Bills and certainly was part of everything with uh, Belichick and company in New England. But I think they got the right guy. I think they do have the right leader at quarterback. I like the way Daniel Jones handles himself. Similarly to Eli, which I think you need to be that kind of a you know, you know, easy breezy kind of an across the board, not having the EKG go up and down if you're going to play in New York and be at, the, in, at that position. So, you know, a lot of good things, but man, that was painful. I don't want to, I, I, I was muting the post game shows. We're going to turn on TV today to see anything. When I get home tonight, I don't know if I can even watch football. Tomorrow, I don't want to read anything. As a Giant fan, it's painful. But, uh, you know, congratulations to Dable and company on a great season. And uh, that's it. The Giants are put to bed. The Islanders, we might as well do that. And Carlos Correa is not a Met. Right now, things on, you know, the sports end for me, not exactly where they need to be on a Sunday. Uh, but, hey, a rock and roll. Uh, join me at Rock and Roll uh, Sushi in uh, Alpharetta, Georgia. If you're local, come on down and come chill. Uh, otherwise, um, enjoy and, and, you know, spend time with uh, loved ones and, Watch some sports, and uh, if you're a Giant fan, uh, try and stay away from the liquor cabinet.